Uh, Alexis is an enterprise architect at EcoPetrol, which is the largest uh, Colombian um, oil and gas uh, company. In his role, he's in charge of defining IT principles, standards, and uh, uh, guidelines, and aligning company projects and programs with, with, with these principles. Uh, Alexis holds a PhD in informatics from the Technical University of Kaiserlautern in Germany. So without further ado, Alexis. Okay, thank you very much. I hope everyone can listen well. Okay, excellent. Okay, so after this really motivating talk that we just had, I hope this also continues to be motivating and, and nice for you. And this will be an experience report from something that we have done at our company in Colombia, which is called Ecopetrol. And that it is the pillar for our, uh, let's say, strategy, which is uh, called simplification and standardization of um, the application landscape. So first of all, I will, beat some, I will give some, some bit of a context. Um, as you mentioned previously, Ecopetrol is the first uh, Colombian company, it's the largest Colombian company. We have 36,000 people, um, including the contractors. And um, also, we are the fourth uh, Latin American oil and gas company. Uh, at the moment, we're producing around 700,000 barrels, and we have a very important goal for 2015, which is to produce one million barrels uh, per day. So that means we have to increase our production uh, really significantly, and that will help us because we are an integrated oil and gas company, an integrated oil and gas company is basically one that has all of the businesses, the exploration business, which is the upstream, the refining and, and transformation of the crude into products, which is the, uh, we call it downstream. And then uh, we also have the midstream, which is the transportation of those products uh, to the different places. So because of that, we would like to be ranked into one important um, world class ranking, which um, is called the PIW. We want to be into the uh, serious, most important companies, oil and gas companies in the world. Right now, we are a bit behind of that. So um, as IT, we always have this existential question, which is, OK, it is, we have to produce one million barrels. How can we really contribute and show that we have contributed to those, um, to those million barrels? And, and this question is, is like, like I said before, an existential one. I have seen some uh, master thesis, PhD thesis working on this. And we, are, we, are being, uh, we have been working on this question for the uh, last couple of years. What we have right now, in, so what you see here is our IT strategy. And we base that strategy on information. The information is the connection between the, let's say, the, the goals of the business and uh, our goals. We're not talking here about more hardware or more software or higher performance or all of those quality attributes that we have in, in IT, normal IT architectures. We're talking here about information. So what we're saying here is that if we provide reliable information at the time that it is needed for taking decisions, that information will increase the productivity on those business processes, will decrease the number of defects of those business processes. So that's why we have this, um, let's say, this strategy called reliable and secure information in real time. Real time, it is not only the millisecond or the second. Real time is for some uh, special cases where some operators are working outside in the fields that you have the information less than 24 hours so that you can take decisions with that information. And that has, can be achieved by using a specific, uh, let's say, uh, principles or working on some pillars. Those pillars are related. One of them is related to what I just told you, standardization and simplification. And the other ones are related to information. So providing consistent and complete information. This is something what we call the quality of information, providing information on the time, which is secure, and which is, let's say, um, standing on security and quality practices. So the talk today is going to be about one of the main streams that we have, because for each one of these, we have a specific task and, let's say, programs. But we're going to talk here about the program of standardization and simplification. And I'm going to show you how we started with that program based on some quality metrics that we have derived from the, let's say, applications uh, and application landscape. So let me show you that by uh, providing you with an example of a very well-known um, 
method, which is called GQM Plus Strategies. This method is, uh, let's say, developed by the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany and the States. And basically the method, what, what, it, what it does is that it connects on a high level the business goals with the IT goals or the project goals by, uh, let's say, deploying specific strategies. So I'm gonna give you an example with, uh, with the oil and gas domain. Here, for example, and these are real numbers, and this is just an excerpt of our, of our model, but here we want to be positioned, as I said before, among the first X, X companies by 2000 and something. Here, this, this will be the goal that we want to achieve, and that could be achieved with a specific strategy. In this case, in, in the oil domain, the auctions of the oil companies are based on the reserves. So if we have more reserves, then the company is more, let's say, sustainable, and the, the, the value of the auction will, will rise. So in our case, we want to increase all those oil and gas reserves. That's an important goal at the business level. And that, let's say, will be measured by the millions of reserves, which is here in the goal. And we have some context and some assumptions. The context is that, that of course, in the previous year, we will have, uh, let's say, a tendency of increasing by uh, Y of the reserves. But also there is an assumption that we have, let's say, sufficient money to, to fund exploration activities. So now, what does that mean in terms of, of the strategies for increasing the oil and gas reserves? Well, there are many strategies, for example, buying companies, um, I don't know, buying practices uh, from, from drilling and stuff like that. But in this case, uh, we choose one example, which is the one related to achieving a balanced exploration portfolio. An exploration portfolio gives you, li like, you can imagine like a big map, and it gives you more or less the places where you will be, um, where you will have a probability of finding a prospect for, for drilling. So it is like, at the end, it is information, huge information. It is, they are like maps, they are the like logs, seismic, and that information could give you the lead to where to find specific prospects or, uh, or, or, or wells. So in, in this case, if the portfolio is of good quality, then the geo geologists and geoscientists could make faster decisions. But if the portfolio, and if the portfolio is of good quality, they could do decisions which are less risky. You can imagine if one geo geoscientist or a geologist um, declares a prospect in a place where there isn't something, well, that is, that is a lot of money for the company. So again, so this, this goes back to the information part. And here is where we do the connection with the IT level. And basically what we're saying here is that if we, if we do everything possible for improving and maintaining that quality of those, pro of those portfolio, let's say, images and information, we could help really those guys, the geologists and the ge geoscientists, to find more. And then we could also um, contribute to the, to the business goals and the, and the million of barrels. And here's where we start talking about IT. And we have several strategies. I'm just gonna point one of them, which is related to developing, maintaining, integrating applications that provide high quality information. So this is something that you could say, okay, this is, I mean, this is something really clear. Uh, but we have declared that as a strategy because we want to measure that. And that's what we will be talking today about. The quality metrics at the level of applications and landscape or enterprise architecture that will help us to really achieve this strategy to increase the information quality and then to decrease the time for finding reserves. So now let's see some of the specific, um, okay, first of all I will explain to you how we uh, develop those, those metrics. Uh, we follow the GQM approach, which is the goal question metric approach developed by Big Basili, which is a person that worked in this project. And what we did first was the survey. In the survey, we took the ISO 25010 quality characteristics. And we asked the, the project leaders, software developers, uh, which is the characteristic that was of most value or important for them. I saw some presentations today where we have these uh, specific workshops for let's say, finding out those uh, quality attributes. We didn't follow any of those methods, but uh, we've also, what we also did was that we characterized the type of software, the programming languages, and the places where we had most of the development. 
And then the idea was that based on this prioritization of the quality characteristics, we could do the GQM workshops and finally derive the metrics and do the measurement program. This is an example of what we got from the engineers. As you can, so uh, the scale here is less relevant is zero and, and more relevant is nine. And we put some of those uh, quality attributes from ISO 20010. And you can see that we don't see much difference on the, on the, let's say, feedback from the developers and technical leaders, except for portability and performance efficiency. The reason for that was that the technical leaders and engineers really understood what the quality problem was, but they weren't able to map it to the, to the definition of the standard. Even though we, uh, let's say, clarify again the definition of the standard, those definitions for us were very high level. So it was not possible to really prioritize based on these quality attitudes definitions. So what we did then was, okay, this is just an excerpt of the results for the type of software we had because we wanted to, let's say, focus the quality measuring. And you can see that we have a lot of business information systems that um, also here the, the Pareto is the um, ASP.NET programming language. And that we also have like a, a sort of a more or less even distribution for upstream, downstream, and the corporates. But what we found then was that uh, actually this survey didn't give us a lot of information. So we changed the approach. And we look at the, actually, what were the quality problems? What were the issues? And then try to measure those issues in order to find something which is really applicable for the company and, and actually try to improve those application, uh, let's say, problems or issues. So the result has been documented in, in another paper that was uh, uh, published last year. And you can see an excerpt of those here. Basically, on the right side, you could see the issues that we found. Of course, we found issues uh, with respect to uh, requirements characterization, ambiguity, completeness, all of that. Uh, some of, most of the, let's say, engineers were concerned about hard-coded parameters in the software that is developed, about internal dependencies in the design, and also external dependencies in the design, reusability of the code, code defect density, this is an important one. Enterprise architecture coupling, which means how complex is when I touch one system, what happens with the rest of the systems? What is the impact on the rest of the systems? Test coverage, conformance of design to implementation, and traceability. The G stands for goal. That means we converted those issues into um, objectives for measurement. Yeah? And that then we define, let's say, the measurement program. It was much more easier to define the measurement program based on that list of issues. And we mapped, as you can see, this list of issues to the ISO quality attributes. At the end, actually, we didn't talk about ISO quality attributes at the company. We were talking about issues, or we are talking about issues. Because again, so this is a too abstract concept. I'm sorry with the guys from ISO. But we really didn't use it too much. It was too abstract for us. So now I'm going to show you some examples of those metrics. Going back to the, let's say, enterprise architecture coupling metrics. This is something that we could extract automatically because we have you know, an enterprise service bus and we can see all of the, let's say, interfaces going in and, and, and going out from an application. So what you see here is a visualization of that. This is based on a tool we, we have, which is called EcoMaps, which is a graph, basically, that connect the dots, which are this green dot here, this green node here is, is an application. And these are the interfaces that are either provided or are either, let's say, um, consumed by that application. And this is just one example of one of the visualizations of one application. But it could give you, as an illustration, a sense, I mean, as an engineer, as a technical leader or, or project manager, of where are you playing when you are going to make a change or you're going to introduce new technology into the company. The next one is another visualization we have. This is a Interesting one because my, my boss, which is the CIO, he doesn't really know too much about, I mean, he doesn't really care too much about architecture in some, in some, to some extent. And when he saw this, this graph, he said, okay, now I understand what you mean by architecture because you have the, the houses and the streets <laughs> and you know, the buildings. But actually here you can see also that you can pinpoint some specific systems 
In this case, the height is uh, related to the sum of used and provided interfaces. And the base area is related to the number of information units that are coming in or coming out of the system. Oh, sorry. So again, in a visual way, we could uh, start discussing, sorry, I didn't show the names of the systems because of confidentiality issues, but we can start to discuss what to do with these systems and how to tackle them. Okay. The next one, which is G4, is related to design external dependencies. This is the goal, and the metric is called application coupling. So again, it, it is also based on a, a static, um, a static, sorry, static measurement. You use normal tools for doing this, and you see, okay, how many applications are consuming information from the interfaces provided by that application, and how many applications are providing information by, um, or are actually using information, sorry, uh, from this application. In this case, just take a look at application eight, which could point, pinpoint that uh, it is an application which is like a heart. It is in the center of something and it is really wired. So we have to check for that application and see what is happening with it. Another met so the same goal and another metric is the number of provided interfaces that are not used by other applications. It is like what they call dead, dead code or something like that. And in this case, you can see in the same application, application eight, that it has some some interfaces that are there, but no one is using them. Okay, in terms of, of maintenance costs, in terms of uh, what we call the opex, this this is an important the important figure because each time that we have to make a change to this application, then we have to be very careful with the testing and uh, okay with the design of it. Now let's go to another one. So now we have the interface architecture metrics. But we also started to see at each one of the applications. And in terms of simplification and standardization. So simplification in the sense that uh, that application shouldn't be complex to modify. So we use three metrics. I'm just going to show you one example of one metric, which is coupling between the objects inside the application. We also use the cohesion metric and the cyclometric complexity metric for checking on that. So when you combine the three metrics, you can, you can decide and, or you can, let's say, look at different uh, aspects. In this case, for example, you can see application one is interesting because although it is, uh, let's say, an application, let's say a COTS application, it is an industry application, <coughs> it has a, a higher media than the other one with respect to coupling. Yeah? And the 50% the up to the maximum is also twice as high as the other one. So that gives you an indicator. Uh, in this case, we did a, co a relative comparison. We didn't check to any benchmark or anything like that. We just checked the relative comparison between the systems in our company. So uh, it, it, it was important to check this. When we saw the cohesion and the cyclometric comp complexity, we saw that this was a really nearly non-reusable application because it, it was too tough to, to change any of the routines or whatever it was inside. <coughs> Okay, what do we do with all of this information? So you can do many abstractions. From the enterprise architecture perspective, you, you can do many abstractions. One of them is display here. So we have here, let's say, like the, the, the core processes, because architecture connects processes with information, with applications, enterprise architecture. That's what theory says. So we, we generated the visualization showing in 2012 when we started this program, okay, what are the, let's say, the colors that we have? So the green color is for mixed platforms. That means we have third party platforms, industry platforms, uh, code software, and those platforms are, let's say, um, supporting the production process, the refining process, logistics and transportation, marketing, and so on. We also found some applications redundancy. That means some places where we have really uh, large platforms uh, and some guys bought one platform in, in a special year because they like it more, and some other guys bought another platform in another year because it was the trend, whatever. But now we have two big platforms, or three, and, and we have a redundancy of information as well. So remember, going back to the, to the goal that we had at the beginning, the quality of information. So having this redundancy at the end impacts the redundancy of information, 
And when you're going to take decisions, you don't really know whether this one or that one. Okay, that's, that's an, important, an important point. And we have an integrated, what we call the integrated platform with, uh, let's say, in simple terms, it is like the enterprise uh, resource planning tool, the ERP. Okay? So where you have the core processes or, or the most user processes a company should have supported by a tool. So this was more or less the picture we had in 2012. Based on this picture and based on all of the analysis on the, what I showed you before, the connection between the, between the different systems, um, the, the external dependencies, the internal dependencies, we declared some principles. And the principles were associated with names of platforms. So we detected some platforms where we said we're going to move to that platform and we're going to start migrating the other tools to that platform. And also during the projects. So the projects now have to, t have to reduce the number of interfaces. So we believe the number of interfaces increases the complexity of the whole landscape. So I'm going to show you now how it should look like. And the colors are meant for platforms, but I'm not going to say any name here. <clears throat> but in, in this case, you could see that the integrated platform should be uh, supporting all of these processes. In the case of the business, we have some industry platforms that have been declared. And in the case of uh, application redundancy, of course, the dream is not to have application redundancy by 2017. And also in the case of HSE, we, uh, uh, we declare that we have to continue with some third-party pla third platforms because it is a very complex process that we could not, let's say, just standardize like that. <clears throat> so this is another, let's say, um, example of, of the strategy. Where we see here, what we see here is the, um, let's say, the number of interfaces in, in percentage, of course. What we had in 2012 and what we are going to have in 2015, what we had last year. And this is like the, the green, the dark green is the plan that we have. And that plan is based in our, in our IT projects. So the IT projects will, will deliver something in that year. And when they deliver, they should uh, take out those interfaces or they should take in some interfaces. In this example, you could see that in 2013, we had a plan for 88%, but we just got to 92%. But in 2014, we're going to go up. But this is because we have some new platforms that are going to uh, standardize some processes, and we still here have to do the transition from the old platforms to the new platforms. So we will be having like a kind of a transition plan, and then we will go down again to the in the number of interfaces by 2015. So this is the way we are monitoring the execution of the strategy, also with the metrics that I showed you before. And um, this is uh, the high level, let's say, metrics, and the other ones were the like, lowest level, lower level metrics. So as a summary, um, we have used this sort of metrics like EA coupling from G7 for identifying the major platforms and moving towards the standardization, and we have declared that. And we have a mechanism for doing that uh, systematically. Me me metrics like G4, which were related to coupling, application coupling, contributes, uh, contribute to the simplification. The, the quality model that we, that we got wasn't built as it was supposed to build. We did it in a different way because the traditional model for us is not, I mean, they are not reflecting real issues and the quality aspect. And something which is very important, the providers, what happens with them, what happens with them right now? So right now we are, we have established the baseline for that and we are starting to apply the model so that they have to comply with that baseline. And this is something which is interesting because let's say the, the practice for, for uh, checking the hard-coded parameters or checking the cyclometric complexity and stuff like that is not really, let's say, Let's say it is in the books, but it's not really well spread. So with that, I finish my presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alexis. I think we have uh, room for one and a half question. Just actually, I was wondering what uh, tools you use to actually extract all of these numbers or these, because you seem to have a really good uh, set, level of detail in terms of uh, the numbers. I was wondering, do you use tools that uh, hook into your applications and systems? And if so, could you elaborate a little bit on them? Okay, sure. So for, I mean, for 
different metrics, we have different tools. Uh, for this, let's say, as I showed you before, uh, the Parito in our company is um, our developments on PHP, uh, ASAP, which is a SAP, let's say, language, and also uh, .NET and JavaScript. So we we use tools for static static uh, checking. <coughs> is that called? Um, what it called? For getting, um, for example, external dependencies or internal dependencies information. That's automatic. That can be done automatically. Uh, we have another metrics there, where we use the the object code, for example, uh, for getting some information about dynamic connections between the modules. Uh, for the enterprise architecture coupling, we use the information from the bus. We extract that information and, and build, the, the, let's say, the graph on, on the bottom. And then based on that graph, we could we use one system, which is called the M system from the Fraunhofer Institute, which is used for doing this sort of code visualization, specific code visualization, like 3D visualizations and, and, and let's say, um, graphs and, and stuff like that. So several tools. Moving, we'll uh, we're holding out questions to hopefully the break or so. Thank you, Alexis.